everyone and welcome back to Intense Wrestling's Mountain Top. We hope you're ready because we've got another amazing champion challenge match for you tonight, but also two incredible singles matches. I don't want to go waste any more time and let's get straight into the action. Now as we build up to Hall of Glory, we're going to see from the number one contender of the world title, former world champion Hardcore Hank is taking on David Hagen. Now I should point out that we're not going to be seeing Greg um, today, thank Christ for that. Um, the Series of Seven with Daniel Hagen will be resuming next week, or next episode of Intense Wrestling's Out on Top. Anyway, here comes Hardcore Hank. Now, if you heard Hardcore Hank at Road to Nowhere, you know that he has made it clear that he he didn't care who was going to win that Elimination Chamber match. He was going to be ready for anyone. But I wonder if he was truly ready when he saw that the War Beast Mammoth is now your world champion. <coughs> Mammoth is one of the largest athletes on the VGIW channel and someone who has laid waste to every to every top level competitor we have at the moment and I wonder if Mammoth I wonder if Hank has the ability, the know-how in how to handle someone like Mammoth he's beaten a lot of people Hardcore Hank has but, for all that smug aura, that big ego, and that violent temper, I wonder if he is quite ready, or if he's going to be all bark and no bite at Hall of Glory. Anyway, here comes David Hagen, and David Hagen very happy as he watched Daniel Hagen get the, his first win in the Series of Seven with Greg. And you can just see on David Hagen's face, he is ecstatic because that means that there is still a fighting chance for him and his son. Because Daniel Hagen, essentially, him, his and his father's careers are in Daniel's hands. And, but, and David Hagen, who has had a long and storied career, he's got to be, like, he's got to be thinking about like how his career you know is in the balance he could leave he could soon have to leave if Daniel doesn't win this series of seven big matches like these he's gonna have to he's gonna have to learn to cherish every single one of them because who knows how long he's gonna have them for I mean saying that I don't know how well David Hagen's going to do against Hank because, oh my god, David Hagen was a top level athlete back in the day, but he's gotten older and he's up against a top level athlete of today in the vicious Hardcore Hank. A lovely bionic elbow from David though as he looks to try and fight off Hardcore Hank, but Jesus Christ, Hardcore Hank, I will say this, as much as I'm trying to big up Mammoth, I'm going to be honest, it's a very much a 50-50 match here, you know, when that happens at Hall of Glory. As tough as the War Beast is, Hardcore Hank is a genuinely inhuman athlete. Like, the way that he is able to endure punishment, the way he's able to dish out punishment, the force, the ferocity, and it could be already over, too. No, 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 David Hayden's staying in this. The fact that Hank is as dangerous as he is it's why he's a former world champion why he's hoping to make it a two-time world champion and honestly him and mammoth is going to be a star-studded event now obviously we do have one more stop before hall of glory um, be sure to check out intense wrestling's genesis as they are building up to their total annihilation pay-per-view uh, be sure to check that out. That is going to be very interesting indeed. Oh my goodness, that was a hell of a shoulder thrust there. And look at him 
just rubbing it in David Hagen's face that he is just outmatching him in every aspect that you could possibly think of, every metric. David Hagen, those old days when he would be top dog, when he would be catch wrestling champion in terrific Texas wrestling, those days are gone. And now David Hagen has gone from top dog to underdog. Ooh, bloody hell, put his all into that big boot though. As he looks to show that this old dog still has plenty of tricks. Now going for a camel clutch here. And look at that right by the ropes. And you see Hulker Ant can't reach for them with the arms back like that. And that is definitely a mind game trick right there. But that's not going to do you any good when Hank can so effortlessly break out of the submission hole. Oh my goodness. Oh, but David Hagen, he might not be faster. He might not be stronger. He might not even be tougher. But he is wily. And he's able to come back on the offensive in this bout. Oh man, I just, I am very concerned. Like, as much as I root for da I'm rooting for David Hagen here, I can't say that I'm rating his chances in this match. Oh, oh no. Oh. Now David Hagen looking to try and get some breathing room, but my God, he is, Hank is looking to suffocate any chances David Hagen has. Oh no, oh no, hardcore Hank, it's about to go flying, no way, oh my god! Hardcore Hank has just plummeted outside the ring and decimated David Hagen. Whoa. Oh my lord, well they're back in the ring now. Oh no, Irish whip into the corner and look at Hank, my god, what a leap! Hank is unreal in that ring. Oh no, no David, you've got to be careful. Oh god, just a taster of what Hank can do with that knee of his. Oh god, up in the air. And just like that, oh, driven down to the mat. Two, three, not even using the knee. Doesn't even need to do that to put the match away. I normally like to say that there was a good effort from both opponents, but while I'm sure David Aiken put in, an effort, put in a, the best effort he could, this was a very one-sided affair. Oh man, I do feel bad for... Oh my god! Well, that goes to show you the level that Hank is going to be bringing to Hall of Glory against Mammoth. In a match like that, I couldn't tell you. I genuinely think that this might be one of those evenly, highly stacked matches in Hall of Glory it's ever had. And I believe the last time we had the last Hall of Glory main event actually also had Hank, as it was the Hank Reaper Crusher match. And it seems no matter where Hank goes, he will always be someone to fear. Next up, we've got Brutus Armstrong versus VVC in singles action. Can VVC end the undefeated streak? <sighs> oh, here comes Brutus Armstrong. Now, like I just mentioned, if you're not aware, Brutus Armstrong is undefeated, never been pinned, never been submitted in VGIW. Brutus Armstrong has absolutely devastated everyone who has stepped in the ring from him, from the lowliest of jobbers to former world champion. Nobody has been able to put away Brutus, and that has made him a force to be reckoned with. The only reason Brutus doesn't have a title yet is because he hasn't decided to go for one yet, but I'm almost certain 
If he went to Eric Schwartz and said he wants a match for a title, I guarantee you that Eric would probably just give it to him. Because that is one way of doing it. If a general manager gives you that opportunity, at the very least, I think Bruce would get a number one contenders match. When he has devastated as many people as he has, a number one contenders match surely has to be something that he can just ask for at this point. But for now at least, he just wants to win the matches to prove a point for the honour of winning those matches. But I've got to say, like, a, like I've said many times before, when Brutus Armstrong goes for the, says that he wants the title, whether it be the IC title, the world title, or hell, even the tag titles, then everyone is going to be put on notice. That is, of course, unless someone can beat him. And I know, I know what you're thinking. This, if you haven't seen BBC before, you're thinking, no chance, no way would someone like this be able to beat someone like Brutus Armstrong. But you're underestimating BBC here. BBC, in a Champions Challenge match, actually very nearly beat Hardcore Hank. And you just saw how good Hank is. BBC nearly came out on top against Hardcore Hank. If he can nearly beat Hardcore Hank, he at the very least has a fighting chance against Brutus Armstrong. You might not believe it, but VVC is a very capable athlete. Former United Kingdom Champion, where, when it was called the Light Heavyweight Championship. Former United Kingdom Champion, I believe a multi-time perhaps, or at the very least he might be one of the, you know, no, he was one of the notable uh, champions, in my opinion. And I think he's, VVC is going to do well in Mountaintop. Well, the match begins now. Oh dear. Oh, well that's not a good start for VVC right there. As Brutus Armstrong gets to work, but VVC is right back on his feet. And ooh, staggering Brutus with a big knee. But he whips the punch and Brutus returns with one of his own. Oh, and a big body splash right there. Just to prove a point. Oh, ooh, good lord. Ram ramming the head into the ring mat. And just making just tearing apart VVC oh look at this VVC though with that insecurity staggers Brutus Armstrong but Brutus easy as anything look at that oh my goodness and now Brutus oh with a big headbutt there dazing and confusing VVC Oh, what is he going to do to the leg of VVC? Oh, right in the back of the leg. And look at that, just oh, taking out the legs. There's going to be no Disco Fever kicks from VVC if Brutus keeps this up. VVC looks to try and fight back, staggers Brutus' arms off, but doesn't topple him. And Brutus just running over VVC. Oh, my God. You don't often see someone get manhandled in this way. But VVC being thrown about. And I think we're about to see the end of this here. Because this is usually the beginning of the end. And one more time. Oh, and he's got him. He's hooked him. He's bricked the pin too. No, no. I was going to say VVC would never give up that easily. Oh, oh, nice reversal and a reverse DDT as VVC looks to mount a comeback here in this match. Bringing Brutus back up to his feet here. And now an Irish whip into that corner, rushing over and a beautiful fist takes Brutus Armstrong down. And now VVC gonna look to try and make a big comeback here as he takes Brutus to the ropes. Just knocking him off his feet. That's a more of a mind games thing to show that he's got what it takes as he looks to psych himself up. And now VVC goes for Brutus Armstrong. Going for that snap there. And look at this. Looking to wear down the undefeated wrestler Brutus Armstrong. 
just... He's doing a good job right now. Brutus struggling to break out of that headlock. Oh, but Brutus now quickly turns it into a headlock of his own, but doesn't keep on it. He wants to just get straight into beating VVC. But VVC... Oh, my goodness. I was going to say, you know, that agility of VVC. But, oh, quickly squashed out by Brutus Armstrong. Now Brutus wearing the shoulder down of VVC. Oh. And driving the head down. And you got to think Brutus is just getting himself back in the driver's seat so that he can hit something big and put... Oh! Oh my God! He is really going to put the Disco Dancing Champion... Oh my goodness! And that visor kick might have just done it. Look at that. One, two... Free. And the same move he's used to put away Wade Danielson in the past has put away BBC. The move he used to put away a former world champion worked wonders here in putting away BBC. Oh man. That BBC definitely tried. He had a brief moment of showing offense, and that. One, just like the prior match, very one-sided. As Brutus Armstrong shows the world why he is undefeated in that ring. Why no one has yet to defeat Brutus Armstrong. Now it's time for our main event. It's the Champions Challenge match. We've got Kendrick Melandre and Eli T, the Tag Team Champions, Pierre Poubelle, the Intercontinental Champion, and the new World Champion, the War Beast Mammoth. Now, if you're not aware of what a Champions Challenge match is, it's quite simple. It's an elimination fatal four-way match where we get the champions on a roster together to fight it out, to see who is currently the greatest champion of them all. And well, if I if I was a betting man, and I am, not monetarily though, just I always like to bet who I think is going to win one of these matches, I would have to say, as good as Pierre is, as good as we know Showtime are, I don't think any of them are going to be able to beat the first ever VGIW Grand Slam Champion. <sighs> um, we'd also like to actually acknowledge that there's been a new record as well. That's something else that happened recently. If you ever check Orcs Wrestling Live, which we do recommend, then Aaron Storm, uh, not too long ago, became their Giga Champion, which was the OW Championship. Uh, this makes Aaron Storm the first person to ever, well we don't usually acknowledge the, because it's different canons really, but Aaron Storm is the first person ever to be both IW and OW champion. That's a, re that's a record that hasn't been done yet, which is pretty impressive. Uh, we also would like to let you know that we'll be doing a collaboration with Alt Wrestling Live during Hall of Glory. Night one of Hall of Glory will be a special OW event. Like I said, we don't normally cross the two different canons. There's usually a fair few differences. But we want this to be an opportunity for you to get to experience Alt Wrestling Live firsthand. If you haven't checked the channel out, I think this will be a great viewing experience for you. And you can see all the things that are different and all the things that are the same between the two shows. Anyway, I do apologize to Pierre. I have given him no love during this entrance. But Pierre, after a successful, quite dominant performance in the two out of three falls match with Holson Shaw, proved why he is the Intercontinental Champion. And if I had to guess, Mammoth or Hank, depending on how Hall of Glory goes, could soon face Pierre in the ring. And while Pierre is still new to intense wrestling, I think he's got a lot. You know, that he you know, he has got a lot of potential. Is he quite there where I can consider him being able to beat Mammoth or beat Hardcore Hank? I don't quite know that yet. But what I do know is that Pierre is very quickly rising up that ladder. 
And if he can keep that momentum going, he is going to be a hell of a force. Anyway, here comes Kendrick Melandra, one half of the VGIW Tag Team Champions. And Showtime, who have been around since the earliest days of the tag division. Kendrick Melandra in particular, who has been hanging around the title scene since the very beginning, being in the first ever world, you know, the first ever world league tournament. He has been, you know, Kendrick has been an absolute force in that ring. And someone that's proven to be quite formidable, quite to be a mainstay at the absolute peak of the mountain. Now, saying that, you cannot underestimate his tag team partner, but we'll get into him in a moment. Kendrick Melandra got the, clearly got the in-ring smarts. Uh, that was a terrifying camera shot. Um, I would never get that close to Mammoth. Um, we've got the durability. Kendrick Melandra and Eli T of Showtime have clearly proven themselves to be the tag team to beat as the tag team division continues to grow. We're going to get to see themselves get pushed further and further. Speaking of Eli T though, here he comes and you'll be hard pressed to find a faster powerhouse than Eli T. When he hits that speed force clothesline, he could reach almost Wade Danielson levels of speed. Or Samuel the Savior levels of speed. It is unreal. And from a man of his stature, of that musculature, it does leave an impact. And because of that, because of that camaraderie with Kendrick Melandra, they both patch out each other's weaknesses and it's why they're multi-time tag team champions it's why they have hung around in the tag scene as long as they have longer than any other team has in VGIW I mean I imagine Mammoth actually should be pointed out was a former tag team champion um, but Mad Ball now over in GHK no falling out just Mad Ball got drafted to GHK so I wonder what would happen if the Beasts of Bedlam were to ever reunite. What would happen if they were to face Showtime? You see there, Kendra Melandra, Eli T, there was Pierre and there was Mammoth. And look at the size of Mammoth and Pierre. And then right now, Showtime are having two very different tails right here. Oh, nice reversal there though by Kendrick. Oh, but he tried to close on, did nothing. Oh my God. And while Pierre is having a little bit more trouble with Eli T, it's a bit more back and forth, a little bit more 50-50, but definitely a bit of fight back and forth. Kendrick Melandra is being manhandled by our world champion. Nice work there by Pierre with the snake eyes, as Kendrick Melandra just punches away at Mammoth, sends him out to the side of the ring. Meanwhile, Pierre going to deadlift Eli T here. And look at this. Oh my goodness, what a slam there by Pierre Pavel. Showing his deadlifting capability, being able to lift someone like Eli T. Ooh, four. Well, Kendrick's managed to get the upper hand on Mammoth. But Mammoth is getting right back up. Can Kendrick keep it up? Oh, it doesn't look like he will be able to. Meanwhile, Eli T. Beating the hell out of the Intercontinental Champion. Oh, look at that. And that's what I was saying about Eli T being one hell of a powerhouse. Being able to do that to someone like Pierre takes a fair bit of strength. Oh my god. Mammoth right now absolutely devastating Kendrick Melandra. Meanwhile, Eli T is just toying with the Intercontinental Champion right now. Not doing a lot of damage, I feel. But this is clearly a case of just showing his domination. Kendrick Melandra and Eli T are perfectly capable singles competitors as we've seen in the past. They're just better together. And we're seeing some of that singles competitive action from Eli T right now though. Kendrick Melandra clearly seeing just how much more competitive the world title scene has become since World League One. It's changed so much since those days. And I think Kendrick's realising that the world champion 
is now an ooh, almost untouchable status. A lovely German suplex there by Eli T as well. Because Kendrick has not gotten a say in this entire, you know, for a while now. Meanwhile, submission hold. But Pierre, nice escape right there as he looks to try and mount some sort of comeback. Oh, look at this. Going to go for a nice sunset flip power bomb as he looks to just try and mount that comeback against Eli T. Meanwhile, Kendrick Melandris looking to try and mount a comeback. Oh, my God. Driving all that weight onto the arm. Pinfall here. Only a, only a pinfall of one there. And I had a feeling. I didn't think Eli T was going to go down quite so easily. Oh, what a lovely clothesline there. But Pierre is right back up. And he's going for a big, strong Irish ribbon. Eli T crumples, landing hard on his arm there. And looking to try and recover. Meanwhile, Pierre's going to join the fight between Mammoth and Kendrick Melandra as he looks to manhandle the world champion. And Pierre doing an amazing job. Oh, and maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, look at that. And the world champion had to deal with Pierre and Kendrick. They had to work together because the War Beast is such a formidable force. And that looks like Eli T wants to go. And my goodness, managing to take down Mammoth there. But Eli T looks, to want to, looks like he wants to take on everyone. Oh, Pierre, winning the show. What could happen if he gets to fight for the world title? He wants to show that if he can last the six months with the IC belt, relinquish the belt, if you're not aware, if you hold the IC belt for six months and relinquish it, you get a world championship opportunity. Pierre clearly wanted to show that if that happens, that he can take on the War Beast. But I think he's quickly seeing just what the War Beast is capable of. Oh no. Oh! Oh no, no. Oh my god! That gigantic boot and Pierre is out of there. We're quite wise in my opinion. I think he realised that it was not going to be smart. Oh my god! And Eli T being thrown around effortlessly like a rag doll. Oh, here we go. One. Just a one count though. Eli T refusing to give up. Oh, wait a minute. Pierre! Pierre! What in the world? That was incredible work there by Pierre Pavel, the Intercontinental Champion, wanting to prove what he's got. Look at him go! Look at him go! Oh my god! And now, look at this! Whoa! What an unbelievable feat of strength! Meanwhile, Kendrick Lander and Eli T of Showtime. They may be friends every other day, but when the champion challenge happens, there are no friends. Oh no. The Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower! And Kendrick goes to pin Eli T, who might be done too. No! Eli T surviving. Oh man. Oh no. Eli T is in trouble here. Oh. And Kendrick Melandra. No, wait a minute, Mammoth stopped both of them. I think for no other reason than just because the War Beast can. There is no reasoning. I can't explain the logic. Mammoth, he's a simple man. He sees wrestlers, and there goes Eli T. He sees wrestlers that aren't being beaten down by him, and he will, and all he can think is that he needs to beat them down, to smack them, to make them regret stepping in the ring with him. It doesn't matter that he just gave up a potential, that he was giving up a potential tactical advantage. That didn't matter to him. Manov only cares about laying his fists in the skulls of his opponents. Well, Eli T, unfortunately, the first one out of this match. It's a damn shame, but, you know, Towards the end, it was just looking an like an impossible situation, really. Anyway, now Kendrick Melander looking to try and deal with Mammoth, trying to take the world champion out of the picture. I think he's realised just how dangerous the world champion is. I think Mammoth there was looking to try and go for an ice stage with Kendrick, managing to reverse it. Wonderful clothesline there to Pierre Pabelle. And now Kendrick Melandra looking to try and stop at the icy champion. Not going to go down so easily. 
And now, look at this. The wrenching on the head, wearing Kendrick down. Oh, the world champion is back. And this is looking bad. Bloody hell. Stomping Kendrick. Stopping him from manning a comeback. Hit Pierre pretty hard in the stomach. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, and Pierre getting out of the ring. He is out of it. And now Mammoth just picking apart the remaining wrestlers. Just in full control. The War Beast looking unstoppable right now. Kendrick though now looking to try and come back as he gets away from that camel clutch. Oh, punching away at the War Beast, staggering him into the corner. Oh no, look at this. Oh, the War Beast, Irish whip into the corner, rushing over. Oh, and driving that full mass in the Kendrick Melandra. Kendrick pushing him right into the clutch of the Pierre, who hits the reverse DDT. And now Pierre, though, going for Kendrick Melandra. Oh, and I think Kendrick knew he did not want to be hit with that Irish whip. And I think Kendrick, shades of his partner, Eli T there, not quite the same amount of force, though. Hence why Pierre was able to kick out. But you can see that Pierre and Kendrick have been trading tips from the looks of it to try and get each other to be even better. Oh, my God. And it looks like at the very least it's been paying dividends. It's clearly paying off. That was very good there by Kendrick Melandra. Oh, nice scoop slam right there. And now bringing Pierre Pabelle to his feet. That Pierre with the shoulder back toss. Oh, right across the spine. And Pierre Pavel, Irish whip in that corner, and you know what he's looking for. Ah, oh, but Kendrick once again, quick thinking, avoiding punishment. Oh, and that's not looking good at all. And Pierre looking for the Eiffel Tower. No, he's looking for something else here. Oh, there it is. Snake eyes. And now Irish whip into the corner again, but Mammoth. Oh, good lord, Kendrick tried fighting back, but M Mama was right there to stop him. Oh my god, there's no way. No, oh my god, he's got something else planned. Bloody hell, that requires a lot of strength. What is Pierre about to do to the world champion? Oh no, no, nothing. The world champion. Oh my god. Cutting off. Pierre Pabelle as he looks to wrench on that head and take out the IC champion. Wait a minute, Kendrick saving Pierre. And I wonder if he wants a piece of Pierre or if he just wants to have that lifeline. Oh, looks like a bit of both here. As look at that! The core strength there of Kendrick Melandra. Better than can be expected. Oh, wait a minute. Look at him go! Oh, he's, he is making a mockery of the world champion. Oh, my God. And you can tell he's doing that nothing more than to mock a now very angry war beast. And the Mammoth going for the Irish whip into that corner. Oh, Kendrick once again slipping away, refusing to go down. And right now, oh, my goodness. Oh no, but Mammoth not even slowing down. No signs of stopping. Oh, oh my god. Oh, wow, the height. Give my Mammoth is seven feet tall, and Pierre managed to kick him in the back of the head. Irish whip into that corner now. And could Pierre? Yes, no. He's going for another new new. Tornado DDT. And now as he looks for Kendrick, you keep seeing him going to that corner. You've got to think he was looking for the right place at the right time to go for the kill here. And I imagine... Oh, but Kendrick again! <sighs> Refusing to let Pierre get that comeback. To hit that finish 
and Pete, because Kendrick knows if Pierre hits the Eiffel Tower, it could be very well be over for him. Oh, go for a pin now. Could he put the IC champion away? Two. No. Pierre is still in this. And look who's back. Oh, my God. Clubbing the IC champion. He looks to try and fight back. Oh, wait a minute. Kendrick Melandra. Kendrick Melandra. No. And it's over. Pierre is out. Two. No. He's still in this. Oh, he's, Kendrick just got right out of there. He saw Mammoth and he wanted no part of it. But Mammoth is back and Kendrick, glancing blow, but managed to stumble over the War Beast. They called the War Beast to stumble over. Sorry for my poor English there. Oh, no, but it didn't even do anything. Oh, God, that is a plummet and a half. Pierre. Oh, he looks a little reluctant, but now going in. He looks to take out both other wrestlers. Oh, look at this. Grabbing Kendrick Melandra. But Mammoth. Oh! Taking Kendrick Melandra out of the picture. What a lovely drop kick there from Pierre Pavel. Now. Oh god. Oh no. This is not looking good at all. Oh my god, the force of that scoop slam. I thought Holson Shaw had a nasty scoop slam, but clearly I had not even thought about what the War Beast would be capable of. He takes Kendrick Melandra back into that ring. Oh no, not again. Oh my God. And I think Kendrick is out cold. No, he's not. He's coming back again. And a picture perfect drop kick and a picture perfect neck breaker. Oh my goodness, but Mammoth right back up. He is looking unkillable. Oh my God. How can he do that to someone the size of Pierre Pavel? No way is it over for the Intercontinental Champion. Surely not. Two. He is. Pierre's out. It's just Kendrick Melandra. You talk about the new era of the tag division. Look at this. The old era of the world title scene versus the new era of the world title scene. Intense wrestling has changed a lot in the, I believe, two, almost three years that it has been around. A lot has changed. Kendrick is still around, but as a tag team wrestler, as a world champion wrestler, he might be from a bygone era of the world title scene. And Mammoth is about to make that evident as he hits the stampede, busting open Kendrick Melandra. And he's not even done. Oh no. He's going to hit the move that put away the Reaper and won him that world title. The Ice Age! And going for the pin, center of the ring. One, two, three. And there you have it, the War Beast Mammoth showing to the world why he is the intense wrestling world champion. And I've got to say, this is why I cannot decide who will win at Hall of Glory. This is why I cannot figure out who has the upper hand. Because Hank is unlike anyone I've ever seen. But so is Mammoth. So is the War Beast. So is the World Champion. Now we hope you enjoyed this episode of Intense Wrestling's Mount Top. If you did enjoy, please remember to leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And please be sure to share this video with your friends to get more eyes on the channel. So be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified of new episodes. And we'll see you next time.